listening to An Inside Look with North America's Top 50 Site Consultants. How do I land a big deal in my community? What are location consultants really looking for? Join us as we pull back the curtain and look inside the secrets of site selection with your hosts, Tim Tarantine and Amanda Harrison. We welcome you to An Inside Look, North America's Top 50 Site Consultants. I'm Tim, here with Amanda, and we're here to celebrate once again another leader in the industry. Amanda, you had a conversation with one of our top 50. Tell us about it. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, I spoke with Peter Worth. He is a director in the Dallas office of Newmark, Grubb, Knight, and Frank. He has specialty in location strategy. He helps clients identify where they should be and why. He's assisted clients like Kohl's Department Stores, Nokia, AT&T, and Momentous Energy. So he's got lots of experience. He's worked with some of the biggest banks in the industry. He's recognized by both his peers and his clients as being a site consultant that's a source of trust and integrity, which is huge. So Peter brings really, really great answers to these questions that we keep asking our site consultants. So I think you will really enjoy his thoughtfulness and his expertise that he shares with us today. Hi, Peter. Thanks so much for joining us today on An Inside Look, North America's Top 50 Site Consultants. Welcome to the podcast and congratulations on being recognized as one of North America's Top 50 in the field. Thank you for having me. What an honor, obviously, to be on here and excited that uh, someone's actually interested in asking me a few questions about myself and hope I can make this podcast interesting. Yeah, absolutely. We are excited to speak with you. So we'll just jump right in with our favorite question to start with. What are three things everyone who's listening should know about you? What are three things people should know about me? I would say the first is that I am a Texan, not only by birthright, but also by choice. I'm sure everybody knows about the proud Texans, and I I would say the same. It's true for me as well. The second thing, I married up. That's for sure. Anybody that's met my wife always gets an inquisitive look when they look at me and say, how did you do that? And I'm I'm still wondering that to this day after five years of being married to her. The third thing, you know, I'm a lover of all things outdoors. So I, I love spending my time when I can hiking and biking and fishing and hunting. And, you know, I spend, I think a lot of us do spend a lot of time as it is in a corporate environment and socializing with people. And while I enjoy that aspect, I, I certainly uh, myself love to get away and get outside. Excellent. Well, those are three great things. And I'm sure if your wife is listening, that she will approve so far. So <laughs> brownie points for that. Um, tell us a little bit more about your career. So how or why did you first get started in site selection? You know, I think why is probably easier to answer than how, because I'm not even sure probably to this day exactly how I got here, but I can tell you why. Really, for me, it was a a natural evolution of, you know, I started out my background actually in commercial real estate brokerage, and still that's a big component of what I do within location strategy. And for me, it really, over time, I think, just made a lot of sense that more value can be delivered to clients by moving upstream from just focusing on real estate and real estate brokerage. And the more important problem that clients are trying to solve is how do I make my operations successful and what does it take for my business to succeed and and really how do I support it? So, you know, for me, I really think gravitate towards helping clients really solve some of those questions to the best that they can. And then, and then once the questions for the fundamentals of how that operation can be successful, then you overlay that with the real estate as opposed to trying to to force an operation into a real estate solution. Yeah, that's a really good way of looking at it and explaining it that I'm not sure anyone's really articulated yet so far. So that's great. Um, Since you are in the business of helping your clients figure out ways to succeed in business, can you tell us maybe one inside secret that you lean on that has been successful in helping them achieve those results? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this day and age, we're, we're, I think, so used to relying on all the information that's at our fingertips by computer and database and, you know, electronically. And I think sometimes we can allow, I'll call them hidden gems to slip through our fingers by not actually 
doing kind of the second component of our due diligence, which I think the first is a desktop audit review. You know, obviously there's got to be a way to, to filter out communities based off of critical flaws and very easy and obvious factors. But I think that the second component of that that's critical to this process is actually doing site tours, whether that's precursory tours without the client, but doing due diligence on the ground because there might be some things that are missed that just a desktop audit can't necessarily reveal to you or tell to you, whether they're certain characteristics about the way the community operates or just cultural differences as opposed to a different area or different region that might have. And a lot of times that that really is hard to quantify in just a desktop audit. So I think it's really key to make sure that you get in and visit before you make your short list. Yeah, that's really good. Um, So when your client first calls you up or sits you down to discuss a new project, what are some of those key issues that you're hearing kind of time and time again that companies are really most focused on? You know, it's a great question, and I can only speak to my experience. And for me, most of the location strategy projects that I do are typically operation centers. So they, you know, employ uh, labor, and that's a big component to their decision making. And I don't think that in the area that I work that that will ever change. I think labor is obviously a critical component to the success of an operation. And so time and again, it's always probably one of the most, if not the most important components uh, that and cost for an operation. Yeah, absolutely. So for the economic developers and the communities who are listening today, what could you tell them are maybe some marketing strategies that you've seen that are really successful that work on you and that seem to work for your clients as well? Yeah, it's a great question. I've seen a lot of creative things done from a lot of the folks out there from the EDC groups. There's a lot of really great groups that have gotten just very good at marketing and and making sure that they keep us up to date on the changes within their community, the wins. All of those are extremely important. Of course, we we always love to get a a basket of goodies that might come every once in a while, but but (laughs) truly the importance is knowing some of the changes within the community and making sure that's always up to date. And I would tell you that nowadays, probably the easiest way to do that is really for me, at least, just electronic email. It's simple. And I would say that uh, the the first part of our review that I had mentioned, that, that desktop audit review, a lot of that is gaining access to information online. And so having a really good, easy website to maneuver and information at your fingertips, one that's active and up to date, whether it's a community that tweets information or just a link to news articles, To me, I mean, I don't think there's any kind of secret sauce to marketing. I think that's critical and ultimately easiest for somebody like me to make sure that I'm aware of the community and really get a sense for what's going on and get a good pulse for activity um, currently happening in the community. Yeah, that's good practical advice. And I like that you said there's really no secret sauce. It's not that anything's necessarily missing or slipping off somebody's radar. It's just doing those basic marketing strategies well that seems to be catching your attention. Um, turning to you a little bit more as a leader, what's one leadership lesson that you carry with you, maybe personally or maybe professionally, that you would hope to pass on to others? You know, this is a, it's an easy one, I think, to answer because I think it's also my greatest weakness and something that, that I've really tried to work on, you know, over the course of my career, and that's be a good listener. And, um, you know, my tendency is to hear what I think the client's saying and, in my excitement, communicate what I think the answer is instead of listening and asking what we call leading questions that uh, allow clients to kind of figure the answer out on on their own. And so I would maybe even suggest that to communities. I think that I've been on some exploratory tours with a client where there have been some communities that are just really great listeners and are asking the right questions and really trying to understand what truly is driving the client. And I think there's a lot of communities out there that do that really well, but uh, certainly um, that's an area of professionally for me that I've identified as an area that I, I want to work at. And I'm finding the value that's really adding them, the more that I can apply it to my professional career. That's great insight on leadership. Uh, Peter, this is going to be the last question we ask you today, and then we'll get you out of here. But if you could tell a room full of economic developers, just one thing, what would that be? You know, this is something that I feel like you you may be looking for more, but it's as simple as it can be. Make yourself easily accessible. Make yourself easy to find your contact information. If I'm on your website, if I'm Googling your city, make sure that it's the front thing on the page. And 
whether it's at the bottom or the side or whatever, I want to be able to find that. And I know that sounds really simple, really silly maybe, but I can't tell you how many times, and, and I, I see it improving the more and more that websites are becoming more up-to-date and, and people are realizing the importance of keeping data up-to-date. But there's times where you, you get on these websites and you click three, four, five times, and it's really hard to find the appropriate contact or maybe the contacts changed. And so there's really nobody that you can get a hold of. I mean, it sounds simple, but it's absolutely critical to making sure that you get to that next step by getting me the response that I'm requesting. No, I think that's great advice. And sometimes the best advice is the most simple. So that's perfect. It's a great way to close today's podcast. So Peter, thanks again for being with us for your time and your expertise. And then congratulations again on being named to North America's top 50 site consultant list. Thank you. What an honor. Appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to North America's Top 50, produced by Consultant Connect, where we're working to bridge the gap between leading economic developers and location consultants. To learn more about what we do and how to get involved, please visit consultantconnect.com or tweet me at Ron Kitchens.